welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here. Check it out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you, uh, if you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. It's a new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover the new ones. All the usual spots, including iTunes and Apple Podcasts. It's Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org, YouTube for the video versions, or anywhere you get your podcast from. Subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. It's me, Kyle Meredith. Uh, today, I once again get to talk with Sam Kiska of Greta Van Fleet. They're back with their third album. It's called Starcatcher. And uh, and what a world that they're building this time. That's that's their thing, right? World building. There's uh, there's storylines, there's characters. So we're going to be talking about how uh, this storyline sort of shares the DNA with the albums of the past, uh, why they're looking to the cosmos this time around. Uh, there's, there's sort of spiritual, there's a lot of spirituality. Um, and I want to ask about how that butts up against the science of things. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about how this is a much looser record. The last time Sam and I talked last year, that was sort of the the reports. They wanted to not, not literally take it back to the garage, but sort of take it back to their roots and a sound. And they teamed up with Dave Cobb uh, down in Nashville, and they got a much looser sound. So we're going to be hearing about all of that. So we're going to be hearing about some of the studio trickery that goes on in this, the fun times they've had uh, recording the record and, and how that makes its way into the record as well. And a lot more. So I'll stop talking and I'll pass things over to uh, Sam. It's Kyle Meredith with Greta Van Fleet. There. Right on. I feel comfortable. I feel you comfortable? Like... You good? You set? Mm -hmm. I don't usually say this, but uh, my background's better. And I'm just going to say that, you know? It you, is. You've got a great shot. My background's better. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, look at it. See, at home, I'd be, I'd have a white piano behind me. Mm -hmm. A fucking palm tree. And it would be really iconic. But not today. Not today. Not today. Well, how about we do this proper and uh, and jump into this right here? Let's do it. And talk about Starcatcher. 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 Uh, so, you know, when we were talking last year, uh, I think you'd set it up and everything to, you know, let, let, let's just begin where we, you know, left off and everything, because this was, this was sort of the reset. Is, is that the way to say it? I mean, th this album, um, going back to the roots, I believe, was the headline that ended up running uh, on all the sites and everything. So, so take us back there. Why did you all decide to kind of go this route? Well, we reached the mountaintop, in our opinion, of what we wanted to do creatively with the battle at Garden's Gate. And it was a matter of where do we go from there? And I think that a a, a pretty kind of standard thing to do is go back to where you last were. So we kind of looked back and we thought, you know what? we've grown so much musically and as writers and as a band why don't why don't we reapproach some of the things that we were doing before uh for example uh going back to the garage days where we would write a song and record it our, ourselves and so what we did is a combination between going out into the woods and in, in a cabin and setting up full band and writing new material which is not uncommon for Greta Van Fleet. It's a pretty standard kind of practice. But what, what we kind of ended up doing is uh, creating in the studio and capturing the creation in the studio. A lot of the album, a lot of Starcatcher is actually us interpreting the music for the first time moments after we kind of wrote a part. Uh, so I think the important part for us was to keep it live, to keep it raw, and to uh, keep the exciting things in and not overanalyze it and not uh, over perfect it you know going using the the first guitar solo rather than the the 50th guitar solo yeah first thought best thought sort of a thing yeah exactly so it was, it was high energy fast paced and i think it reflects uh on the record because you it, it sounds fun it's it's, it's exciting it's it's, it's sonically uh it's a landscape and it's, it was just really fun to create and i think that's what music should be and that's what recording should be anyway yeah it, it's interesting the time um just kind of looking through rock history and seeing how you know bands and and 
how their success affects what they choose to do next. And, and as you say, you know, kind of making it to the mountaintop creatively and, and successfully, you guys are doing good, that it might be a natural time to start looking back. I mean, I guess what I'm asking is, you know, if at all, how much does nostalgia start playing a part of it? Like, hey, remember when we were just in the garage in the basement? Like, is that is nostalgia part of what you're talking about? I think that that is an element of it. I think it's the kind of the romanticism of, you know, four guys creating together in uh, an undisclosed location. I think that uh, a lot of the inspiration for the album was uh, it, it moved very quickly and ideas were very quickly picked up or very quickly abandoned. So we really made a lot of decisions very uh very quickly we you know very definitive things very kind of polarized like yes this is what we want or no this isn't what we want hmm. uh, so but i think we can attribute you know some of that fast pacedness to dave cobb uh because he likes to move very quickly and what we could you know very well end up doing is get stuck being meticulous and over analyzing something uh so instead of you know retrying a, a part or a take he would just say, "No, do it again, or, or let's get the next thing. Let's 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 move on." Uh, so, I I think I think it's uh, yeah the romanticism of 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 just uh, four four guys in the band creating together and being relaxed and uh, being authentic and capturing it in an authentic light. And I think that's that was the whole concept for the album going in. Yeah, is there like like that line in Frozen uh, Frozen Light? Four brothers searching for a meal. Like, is that one of those moments that you kind of kind of appropriate to real life? Like, is that, is that speaking to this moment? Exactly. It's a little nod to us almost in this mythological story. Mm -hmm. so, and that also kind of slipped in now that you mentioned that. Uh, there were some more personal things that Josh kind of started writing about on this album, which I think is really interesting because not only I think he's at his literary peak as as a lyricist and as a writer, but also he's taking some different perspectives and he's taking some of his own perspectives and they're unique perspectives because there's very few people in the world who uh, kind of are in the same position as, as we are. And we, you know, have the opportunity to uh, analyze things and talk about our own discoveries and talk about our own adventures uh, while applying it to a, a much wider scale. So I think some of the lyrics are really, really next level on this album. I mean, they're they're literally next level. They're out of this world, in in the cosmic sense, mm -hmm. in the spiritual sense, and 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 maybe it's sort of in the biblical sense. It, you know, if, when I when I look at it and and the story that it's the, the album sort of tells, you know, you start to wonder because you know we, I mean, geez, the first line is "Hail the God Song." I mean, that's that's how the album starts. <laughs> you know. I don't know if we can speak directly to that. What is the story this album tells? Because you you all, I guess, are taking the elements of stuff that you've sang about in the past. What are those that make their way to Starcatcher? And what is this wider story? It's kind of the story of uh, complete, uh, just the creation of the universe, really. Uh, and it kind of talks about these different mythical figures that are very three-dimensional and intangible in a lot of ways uh that being said the star catcher figure is one that is kind of this uh creator figure um and yeah i, I guess it plays with some themes of uh of of, of life and living and it, it touches some pretty big themes but it goes from uh the kind of like th the creator of the universe and the the inner child of the creator um, and it, so it, it's kind of like goes from the perspective of what you may call refer to as God, uh, Krishna, Yahweh, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And it goes down to this, you know, the perfection of a child and the unperverted nature that, uh, you know, the child's mind uh, has, you know, towards towards uh, humanity and and just being uh i know i know it's a bit vague because it, you're, you're trying to put 
push all of all of this different information into kind of like one box. But that's the overarching theme. But we also, you know, we also break loose a little bit and we we have some fun and we kind of talk about ourselves a little bit too. Yeah. So was there any reason? I mean, was this just the natural next point of the story you all wanted to tell? I mean, was was there conversation saying this is, you know, like why, how did you end up here? It started with what we were doing musically. It started with what started uh, like emerging when uh, uh, Jake Daniel and I were kind of creating the music landscapes. And then Josh, Josh is always around kind of listening to what we're doing. And he kind of jumps in when he feels it's the right time to make a judgment call about what the song is about and what it is uh, lyrically. Uh, so the music informs the lyrics and then the lyrics inform the music and it just kind of ping pongs back and forth until we have this fully realized idea. So I think Josh kind of ran with that concept as the music was being created. Yeah. And, and into the cosmos we go. Yeah, exactly. And then we know, then we know we have a better idea of what it is lyrically and what it is story-wise. So then we can run with that. So it's about creating and exploring at the same time. I love that theme though. And it, and it, you know, I don't know, hopefully, probably I'm guessing, I'm not trying to project here, but that's probably part of the intention, have the listener think about it, you know? And I do start thinking about that. I mean, those big questions as we look to the cosmos sometimes for that, you know, Um, wondering, you know, does spirituality and, and science, are they in contrast or not? And then I what if that you, Kyle, you're always asking questions. <laughs> well, then, you know, and, and the, the, but there's the darker side of that too, right? What if nothing, like you're asking the bigger question, is that part of it? Like, what if nothing? Yeah. I th- yeah. I think really, I think there's really great music that's kind of easy to listen to, but what we want to do is make something that's rather uh, thought provoking that makes you kind of, kind of snap out of, you know your kind of daily thing and and kind of think about something and give you give you because it's it's not very often that you just decide to sit down and think about where did life come from why do we exist what's our purpose here <laughs> you know uh but i it's something that uh, we've been asking for the you know for eternity since since consciousness uh formed in in us so it's it's one of those really unique themes, and it's one of the biggest themes, and it also it's an ancient story, and it's a new take on that, but through the lens of rock and roll, right? And as you mentioned, though the fun moments, um, I mean, Runway Blues, that's a fun one. I got mad that it trails off. Me too. Me too, Kyle. <laughs> How much more of that song exists? Ah, uh, that's probably that's probably be that's probably about half of it. Yeah, the story on that is that we just started playing it in the studio after, you know, a few bottles of wine and we we just we just we completely made this up on the spot. That was like take one of something that we just were recording. And Josh came in and started like singing on it and uh we all loved it, but Josh hated it. So eventually we convinced Josh like okay, we can put half of it on the record. So that kind of brings uh, an end to uh, side A, and then you flip the record. So it's a definite tease, and you know maybe that's something we'll play live or release the whole version later because I I, it's really cool and it was kind of captured the energy of what we were doing in the studio. Yeah, yeah, you like way back in the day, you'd have something like uh, like Ray Charles, what I'd say, and he'd put half of it on you know seven inch, half of it on the first side, the other half on the second side you know, allow That's for the great. flip or something like that. Like we plant that seed for you guys. Yeah. I like that. I might, we might use that one. I like the single thing. Use it. Yeah. Release it just as a, uh, as a single. That'd be, that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to hear what the second half of that, but, but there's those moments in there. I mean, the headphones moments, the, uh, the background vocals at the end of uh, the falling sky, mm-hmm. like th- there's, there's sort of free license. I'm sure when you're making the record, but you know, those moments like that, like how weird, wacky do you want to go? Yeah, exactly. It's about just coming out with absolutely zany ideas and seeing what works and if it's an avenue that makes sense um, and making something that's really unique and hasn't necessarily been heard before because I think that's 
uh, I think what this really what we're out to do is create something that doesn't exist. Uh, and once again, pull the stuff out of 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 the air as it's zipping by you, kind of the exploring thing, but also inventing and creating uh, at the same time and creating something that's exciting. And uh, yeah, we experimented a lot with backup vocals because it's a very human texture always. And uh, it's it's just something that really lends itself to feel very, uh, very human and very textured. Yeah. It's fun. And so much is said about the music. I mean, we would talk about the story and the music all the time. Do, do Does film ever play a part of your all's inspiration? Because when I think about these thematic, you know, concept albums, like, we, you know, again, influences music, 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 but is, are movies a part of it? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, when you're when you're watching a film, it's like this it's like this marrying between uh, these um, these fantastic visuals and these very dramatic uh, soundscapes and, and, and a plot line, of course, the story, arguably the most important part. So film has all of those things. And what we try to do is we try to make uh, a film that you know that's an album it's it's the 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 visual sense lives actually within the music it's almost like a book uh meets a film in in music form because you're drawing your own uh visual landscape and your visual environment and characters uh within your own imagination which is really fun because you get to use your imagination while listening to this stuff and uh and maybe mine's a little different from Jake's or, or from Daniel's or Josh's uh, but the listener gets to, uh, you know, emotionally invest in in the music because they know that we've poured our our hearts and souls into it, and uh, make sure we were very intentional about everything that we did there, and uh, kind of create a scene, if you will, scene after scene after scene, and then that's kind of the that's kind of the film itself. But a lot of the cinematic al- uh, um, attributes of of cinematic music of soundtrack music we really love like really really deep bass or or a gong or or string parts or you know like uh human voices in the background uh so yeah building the environment's really important for us the song is the most important part the performance but also creating the textures and uh the contrast between sex sections and songs have you all ever talked about doing a feature length film Yes, yes, we have certainly. And I think we uh, we might start with scoring, and uh, kind of work our way into maybe some some shorts, and uh, you know get get into the the film scene a little bit, just to as another creative outlet to uh, create more environment. And uh, you know, I I would imagine that maybe eventually there would be a Greta Van Fleet curated film about the universe. Uh, within Greta Van Fleet, whether now is the time or not, I don't know. I feel like we're we're still building on this world, like this universe we have. And Starcatcher is kind of a different world, uh, maybe a different in a different part of the solar system, if you will, from the Battle at Gardens Gate. So I think we're we're still building it, and we're still kind of wrapping our our own heads around it, and you know, figuring out how certain. Uh, characters within the music interact with others. That's a cool story. I'm ready to watch. So hurry up. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we'll have a writing <laughs> session tomorrow. <laughs> Sam, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, congratulations on this record. I love it so much. I didn't even mention the first uh, single with me, The Master. It sounds so good every single time I hear it. That song is epic. Right um, on. Which you guys do really, really well. So congrats on this one, man. I appreciate that, Kyle. Thank you very much. I love talking to you. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. 
Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.